How about you guys? What about your finals? Did you start again? I'm almost done. I just realized how many I had next week. <laughs> oh I, I thought I was doing good, you know? Made him depressed. I really did, man. Uh, all I have is to finish this salsa stuff. Oh, and I saw um, you guys' presentation. How did you go? I enjoyed okay. it, and everybody, everybody loved it. Seems like everyone loved it, it. yeah. 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 You're happy. It was stressful. Is your chair broken? I don't know. You, you, her. you don't have to. I tried to put all the good ones. Over it's there. a nice lab. I think I just like to sit too high. Oh, okay. Oh, man. <laughs> so. oh, um, yeah, I like the presentation. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. So. okay. So in the folder, you guys have um, the first thing is. Um, presentation so you can take notes or anything if you want while we're presenting. Mm -hmm. We have a question section at the end um, and all of the materials that we delivered and discussed throughout the semester as well as the video that Arturo so kindly put together for you guys. Awesome. So you can look through that. So just to let you know, Dr. Bargman was, um, we told her yesterday about the meeting, she wasn't able to come. Okay. She had to take care of her daughter and <laughs> her husband works late tonight, so it's just us. Okay. Um, but we'll be reporting to her after you guys can shoot something nice over if you want as yeah, well. Yeah, absolutely. So, okay, we're ready whenever you are. That's all right. Right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, that meeting, uh, contains all the videos that we made for you and all the pictures that we took at Warfest at the Ripley House. Or it also includes your presentation. Uh, I posted it online, but there's a personal copy for you. Awesome. Uh, the thing about that is that you can take those pictures or those videos and after the alternate. If you know someone who can manage that, if you want to use them probably or use them, you can just take them out of there. Cool. That's okay. Thank you. All right. Well, I want to welcome you to the Valente School of Communication. Uh, as you can see, we have stuff too. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we want to thank you for giving us the opportunity to work with you through all the semester. And uh, we want to give you a uh, wrap up about all we did for you during the last few months. Uh, the goal, your goal, was to develop a business plan for NCI so they can market their salsa product, which we now know is called Good and Hot. Our goal was to determine your needs and then develop a, a strategic communication plan that will complement your business plan. In our first meeting, uh, we told you what we were unable to bring to the table to help you guys out. And that included our work experience, our writing and editing skills, our research skills, our work ethic, and our event planning and social media management. And that gives you an intrinsic value to your company. And then after we learned what your needs were about your company, we made some suggestions about what kind of documents you may need and you can use to promote your company and your product. And those included a media kit, which included a company backgrounder, a fact sheet, a news release, a cyber scan report, and monthly activity reports that we deliver to you each month. We also established you know, a way of communicating with, with each other through meetings via text or via email, and that worked out pretty good, I think. And uh, one of the first things that you requested was information about your competitors. So we went to work immediately, and in the two weeks that ended on February 21st, we uh, located all your competitors in the state, which turned out to be 94. So.
So we had to uh, trickle that number down to 24 once we looked only at your competitors in the city. Still, that was a big number for us. So after Jasmine and I had a little discussion and evaluation about the competitors, we decided to use three criteria to reduce that number. And that was, we look at your local competitors here in the city, we look at companies or organizations that were nonprofits, and third, we, look, we looked at companies that were supporting some kind of charity, which is kind of what your company is going to do. And that's how we ended up with these six uh, names. I want you to keep in mind that getting these names took about 10 hours of research and uh, was an investment. And we, we not only found the names, we went into their websites and made a critical analysis of what they were doing, what kind of messages they were putting out, and what social media platforms they were using. And we found out that they, some of them use Facebook, Twitter, Yelp, and Google+. Plus. Now, these are the major communication channels that they use. Company do not use all of them, so that's a key advantage for you. Uh, go to the next slide, please. And this is the tabulation that we did for these six companies, which included the, their key publics, their messages that they sent out, the communication channels, where they're located, the charities they support, if they support at all, and where they are located, or where they sell their product, and how much does it cost. Uh, go to the next slide. And then we realized that these are some of the communication messages, messages that they sent out. But you can see not all of them are very consistent. Some focuses, some of them focus on quality, which is pretty much everybody. Reliability, only one. Longevity on the business market, only one company. Loyalty, as you can see, they're not very consistent with this. And we think that this is a key uh, metric that you guys can use to compete with them. Can you go to the next one? So this is one of the two that, uh, weaknesses of your competitors, inconsistency with their social platforms. Uh, most of the time, a company sets up a Facebook account or a Twitter account because they feel that they have to have it, and then they leave it alone. They don't use it at all. So that's an opportunity for your company. You gotta be as active as possible if you're gonna set up a Facebook account or a Twitter account. You have to be constantly communicating with your public. So that's the only way you, you're gonna grow your followers and, and promote uh, your cause. The other uh, weakness is one way communication. Most of the companies that were listed here, they only send messages out. They don't receive it. Because we have not seen anything like that. And that's another key advantage for you guys. So if you, you have to be interactive with your followers and welcome all feedback. Do not just be a company who meets a customer and says, okay, here's salsa, take it, thank you for the donation, money, goodbye. You gotta listen to the feedback, what they have to say, if you like it, what's a good product, what do you think about the, the campaign that we're doing for this organization. All, all that information is good for you because you can use it later down the road when you have to make your decisions about how to target your product or you have to adjust your approach. And I think uh, Jasmine is going to take it from here. Hey guys, I'm going to um, talk a little bit about what your key messages should be for Salsa. Um, we think that the main key message should, um, should be the loyalty of the salsa. Everything here is locally sourced. Every The recipe is a hometown recipe. We think that um, that can be a really big selling point for you guys. It's a big story um, for, P for PR. You know, you're gonna gain an emotional connection to your audience based on the creator's um, story. Um, also local packaging. And then you also take everything that you get from the salsa and put it back into the community as well. So your biggest point is that we're local and we want to support you. Um, the other things that you can obviously focus on as well is the quality of your product, your reliability. You're here, like I said, to serve the community. Next slide, please. So in order to deliver the message, NCI already has a pretty huge social media following. These are some of the metrics that they have, 540 followers on Instagram, 2,000 uh, 75 followers, Google Plus, so on and so on. So we think that you should 
utilize their current social media, but also make a separate, um, make separate accounts for the salsa itself so that it can create its own brand and its own following um, based on its, uh, the quality of that product. Also, consistent community involvement. So creating events within the community, because that's who you're here to serve, with the salsa present. There should always um, be a stand with the salsa. The salsa, um, you should always have like recipes or anything like that to bring attention to it with the community and help them um, create new recipes, create new uses for the salsa, um, just connect them, to connect them emotionally with the salsa. So another thing that we delivered for you guys was the media kit. The things that we gave you was the press release, the backgrounder, and the fact sheet. Um, the press re release, we based it on the release of the salsa, so the event that happened at Ripley House on April 17th. Obviously, we um, you know didn't deliver that. So with that, um, with that press release, you can adjust it and <coughs> use it for different events that may come in the future. For salsa. The backgrounder could pretty much stay the same because it's a backgrounder about NCI and the salsa brand itself. And then the fact sheet is more of a condensed version of the backgrounder, so it's more um, easy for the readers to gain the information that they would like. Some things that we think that you can add to expand your media kit are corporate bios of obviously the people at NCI, but I'm sure that there is a separate sector for the salsa itself. So you would have bios of, you know, the team lead for the salsa, the uh, leader for the marketing, the leader for um, the PR, which you might do like a small section for Black Sheep because that's who works with um, salsa. Uh, a bio of the recipe creator, as stated before, that can be a huge story in the media. So make sure that you guys keep him and his personality involved in the branding of the salsa. Uh, CEO op-ed on the NCI website, they have a CEO op-ed there already. And she's talking about how great NCI is and where she thinks that it can go in the future. You guys can also create an op-ed for the team lead for salsa itself. And then he or she can um, speak on how great they believe salsa is and how it can not only help NCI, but go back in and help the community as well. So the next thing we did with you guys this semester was attend the event at Ripley House that I spoke about before. Um, we had a great time with you guys. Thank you so much for involving us. It was a pretty good experience. So we have this video from the event. And you guys also have this video on the CD in the folder. <laughs> that was my favorite part <laughs> with the dancers. Okay, with our communication as a team, Arturo and I, and along with you guys, we call you the salsa team, <laughs> um, what went right? Our bi-weekly meetings, I think we did pretty good with that. Um, and if we were not able to make it to the meetings on both ends, we both let each other know. Um, our communication system, we had, we used text messaging, we used email. We also utilized group me, which was pretty good for all of us. Um, the activity reports, we tried to make sure you guys understood what all we were doing each month. Hopefully you guys enjoyed those. And the media training, that was my favorite part of the semester. I hope you guys enjoyed that as well. Got some feedback from you all saying that you learned a lot during the, um, during the training and during the taping. Um, I think you guys got the, the videos back from that, right? Did each of you I saw it see? in class and I didn't get like, a, someone has an email or a copy of it. Maybe it's Julius, yeah. we'll follow up with. Okay, maybe if you guys want that, we can work on trying to get it for you. Um, so I like that. You guys let us know that you like that. I'm glad you appreciated it. The things that, would, I don't know if I would say that it went wrong, but things that didn't go so good. They were kind of out of our control. Um, the original communication plan, we wanted to be a lot more hands-on and get more out. 
but due to the lack of um, products, we didn't actually have the products before, and then just a little bit of separation from NCI and their team as well. We weren't as, um, they weren't as inclusive as I think all of us would have liked them to be. So we weren't able to execute the original communication plan, NCI schedule changes. Um, there were changes with the release of the salsa, with the jarring of the salsa, and um, when they had the labels and things like that. So like I said before, we didn't really have a product to present to our audience. Um, the R and team, R and D team's lack of communication with us, like I said before, they weren't as inclusive as we would have liked them to be. And then the good and hot UHPR plan. I know we discussed having a campaign here on campus, but again, we didn't really have everything that we needed. Um, and that's out of all of our control. I think we all, Arturo and I, as well as you guys, did our best to produce as much and create um, as many ideas as we could with the information that we had and with the sources that we had at the time. Um, the recommendations for keeping everything running smoothly if you guys are continuing with SALSA um, would be the same bi-weekly meetings, just making sure you keep each other um, ahead on what's going on with SALSA, um, the communication system, keep all the lines open, whether it be email or text message or phone call or anything like that. Um, activity reports, we deliver them as future PR specialists because we like to keep account of everything that we're doing, but you guys can also do it as well as entrepreneurs to keep a tab on everything that you're doing. And you know, if somebody is not able to attend, it's, it's the minutes basically of your meeting. Um, and a recommendation that we had for the salsa itself would be to separate the salsa, well not separate it, but make sure that it has its own sector of NCI. When you go to NCI's webpage, you don't see anything about the salsa. You don't see anything about the salsa on their social media. So we would really recommend that you guys push for them to give salsa a name, make it you know a big thing within, um, within NCI. So maybe they can add a, a tab or a link on the NCI webpage that is dedicated to salsa itself and creating um, social media outlets for the salsa as well. So do you guys have any questions for us regarding salsa or how um, PR can help you in general? Okay. I'm trying to figure out a way to form this question. <laughs> As far as um, like the U.S. PR plan, mm -hmm. do you think there's anything more we could have done to make that happen in any form, or is it been kind of like a really watered down, lighter, like, lighter I, version? I personally believe that when you do something, you want to have everything and really do it so that it's effective. Because then, if you come back later um, and try to do it with all of the resources that you wanted in the beginning, it's kind of a repeated thing you know what I mean and I don't think that the audience will receive it as well I think that we we could have right. um, put the name out there but without a product and um, you know they, they couldn't taste the salsa they didn't have a visual of the salsa we didn't have a jar we didn't have a label or anything like that and we don't have any web pages for it no right. social media nothing on the NCI website so in my opinion it would almost be like we're presenting like and I see, yeah. Yeah. Right, you know, yeah. Arturo, what do you think? Well, uh, that's one of the challenges uh, when you try to launch a product like that. And in every situation, there's always going to be challenges. I mean, you plan for something and then something happens and you have to change your approach. And sometimes what you want to do from the beginning is not going to happen. Right. You have to wait. Uh, that doesn't mean that it can be done. It just has to be postponed. And, and you look for other ways to, to try to accomplish your goals and what, you, what you're trying to do. Awesome. Okay. All right, thank you. And I, I mean, I think with, with PR and with business, timing is everything. Yeah. You know, you want to make sure that you have it on point the first time. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I just have a question for both of you, like in regards to, because we gave you guys feedback, or rather, we gave Barnum feedback on the relationship and the way the partnership works out. Do you guys have any? Constructive criticism or any like in terms of our side of things, how the partnership worked. Could we have been doing more? Could we, you know, is there something that you wish would have gone one way instead of another? Aside from the NCI, like inclusiveness, you know, is there anything that we could have done differently? I guess to learn from 
to apply it in the future to say whenever we're working with a partnership like this, how do we approach it? Do we do it differently? Or you know what I mean? Does that make sense? Uh, in regards to our relationship, uh, uh, I think we work pretty well with each other. In regarding with the product that you were trying to develop the plan for, uh, it's something that you cannot control. That was, yeah. But I mean, you did everything you could, and we were just following you. <laughs> but uh, I do, I, I do want to point out a couple of things to you guys uh, regarding the media training. There were two sessions, and you didn't participate in the first one. Mm -hmm. And when you get an opportunity like that, just take it. Because yeah, sure. th those uh, classes are very expensive. I pay almost two thousand dollars to get like two hours of training. Yeah. And, and I mean, when you get it for free, just take it. Yeah. You don't never know when, when you're gonna use it. And, and, uh, and that helps. It helps you not not only because uh, it's a interview about your company, but when you do a presentation. It kind of comes back to you too, mm -hmm. and it helps you to have more voice and more confidence in front of an audience. And uh, I, I don't know if you read my my email and, and the pointers mm -hmm. I gave you in the presentation. Mm -hmm. uh, it just I thought it was pretty good. I mean, I liked the way you guys handled the questions. I mean, you guys were on point. So somebody asked you a question, right yeah. there, the answer. That's a lot of what counts in most presentations. Yeah, Those Q&As can go pretty well. <laughs> and I also admire all you had to memorize, but like I said, you don't have to memorize anything. You can use right. notes. Yeah. It's very helpful. Mm -hmm. yeah, because that puts, if you try to memorize it, you put pressure on yourself. Oh, yeah. that's, and that's what right. makes you guess that thing. I mean, if you have a partner right there, you can ask. Yeah. That's what you do. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I really appreciated our relationship as well. Like I said, I think that both of us were being pretty good sports uh, given the situation that we were in. So I, I think that, that we all did well with communicating with each other and um, remaining positive about yeah. everything and still, you know, attempting to do as much work as we could so that we could get the experience that we needed as well. Even though it wasn't, it may not have been applied to the real world right now, you know, um, from you guys' side, you've seen a press release, you've seen a backgrounder, so you know what to look for in the future with PR. And with us, we've seen a business plan from you guys and um, seen how you guys create your timeline to work everything through. So I think that we both learned from each other in the situation. So thank yeah, you guys. Yeah, I thought it was good. Jasmine is right. I mean, when you are out there and you have your own company, now you know what those documents look like. Yeah. Nobody's going to. And also, the whatever you learn from this experience, uh, you can take it out there and mm -hmm. not like that's the most important thing. Yeah. And uh, I'm glad that we're able, able to help you out. Well, we appreciate and, uh, it too, for sure. Yeah. Uh, one more thing I want to add, uh, on that slide where, where it says what went wrong, th those are just challenges, but uh, on, on the other side, on what went right, right. Th th those four items are very important, and, and and you guys need to take them with you wherever you go. They can be applied in any situation you, you can find yourselves. Communication is very important, yeah. especially when you have employees. and, and of co-workers that, that either they are difficult or don't want to work with you or whatever you, you yeah. still have to communicate even if they don't do it yeah. you still have to go after them because yeah. that's how that's how the problem starts when somebody doesn't communicate and i like the activity reports just something i've never done personally on any project but in the company setting it's good to be able to track what you're doing and look back and say what are we doing too much of or too little of and how much yeah. value are we getting out of the thing we're actually doing yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I like that. I like that because it lasts a lot, for sure. I just had a question about a uh, competitive analysis. I know you guys did a lot of work on that. I really, really appreciate that. I think that's the slides that you guys broke down. Uh, that really, really showed how much I'll put into it. I guess my question on the this is the third slide of it. Slide number three, where it shows the six. Uh -huh. Now, were all of those six companies, the three points that you said, locality, uh, supports a nonprofit, or 
were all of them doing those things, or are those? Or they met at least one. Yeah, or they met, or they met at least one. They met at least one. I okay. know that um, for sure. The for the yeah. troop salsa, that's a company based in um, in Florida, but they most closely mirrored um, your plan to give all the proceeds back to a chari charity or multiple charities. So they have, I think there are three different um, charities that support uh, troops, veterans, and um, active military people, um, and all of their proceeds go back to that. So that's one of the reasons why we included them there. The other people on, um, the other companies that we looked at, I think John Henry's was the one that does, um, they do community services as well. Yeah. Yeah, I think they, they, they have uh, scholarships. They do a lot of other products as well, mostly barbecue sauce. And they recently developed the salsa that they're selling as well. Um, but they do lots of scholarships and things like that. Right to Texas, we got that recommendation from you guys. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, apparently that um, is probably one of your biggest com competitors here in Houston. They're based in Katy. Yeah. Um, they've been around for a while and they sell a lot. Actually, in a couple of our classes, um, Dr. Barterman was trying to describe to us this salsa that she just loves so much. And then she was like, it's right, it's something. I was like, oh, right to Texas, because you guys had said it to us before. So it is a huge competitor because obviously people remember mm -hmm. the name mm -hmm. of it. Um, Texas Tamale Company, they're a huge company. I know that you guys talked to, I think it was the owner mm -hmm. of the company, correct? Um, and they also do, um, I think they do packaging and things like that as well same thing with consolidated bills they do more packaging than they do the actual products but they do have a line of sauces that they give out to restaurants and they sell individually um, i think that they sell only online and they're not actually their sauce only sells online and it's not actually on the shelves clint salsa is on the shelves as well um, i think clint's was the the one that was really really focused on that they are a family putting all of this together like the the two owners are husband and wife and they uh, use everything locally the same as um, good and hot and um, they produce it together for a while they were just doing everything the packaging and everything within their kitchen and then they you know once it got bigger they had to um, outsource to get the packing packaging done but all of them hit at least one of the points that that you wanted yeah the other companies most of them were for profit and right. they didn't support any charitable yeah. organizations. That's why they, they took them out. Right. It's awesome. awesome. It's really good. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, guys. Again, I know I've thank said thank you, guys. you guys yeah. in the presentation, but we really had a good time with you guys this semester. Yeah. We're definitely going to take some learning tips from you guys and hopefully you guys take some from us as well. Absolutely. Right. So we can keep this, right? Yes, yes that's, that's for you. Yes. Awesome. So the way it works as far as <clears throat> feedback with Vardaman, I know there's the one email we already sent, but mm -hmm. like I said, we just send her an email saying, follow up about the presentation. Yeah, and you don't have to, I'm just saying because she's not here. So if you uh, want to, you feel moved, I'll say that. <laughs> oh, we're moved. We are moved. We are indeed moved. Uh, <laughs>